Welcome to the introduction to asset monitoring and condition-based maintenance with the Pi system. My name is Michelle Kuyee. I'm a product marketing manager at OSIsoft. I've been here since dinosaurs roamed the earth, literally. <laughs> um, before that, I was actually a customer like you are. I came from an oil refinery out on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. And being a refinery back in the old technology days, you can imagine that everything was manual and keeping track of assets was quite a challenge. We're hoping to introduce you to ways to optimize on technology. Hello everyone, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Sasha Krivanosova. I'm a systems engineer with OSI Soft um, based in Houston. I started five years ago as a customer support and if you're curious, my accent is Russian. <laughs> <laughs> and I speak pigeon, Hawaiian pigeon. So here we have uh, this, the Pi 101 series. This is the second in the series of, of sessions. And we're going to attempt to make things as simple as possible in the session so you too can go home and put these techniques to work for yourself. So coming from a refinery and working with many of our customers over the years, we encounter lots of different disasters. We have turbine fires here. We've got pumps that have failed over time. This was obviously left in a poor state. Um, we've got transformer explosions, God forbid. There's lots of different things um, that are maintained, managed by you, our customers, um, in the field. So a lot of times, I know where I came from, it felt like I was just chasing fires. I was running from one problem to the next um, over and over and over again. And what we want to do is make you um, have enough skills so that you can go back to your environment, sit back, and revel in your success. Yeah, you were supposed to laugh. <laughs> OK. So how do we do that? So there's five basic steps. And Sasha is going to take us through each of these steps along the way. It'll be a pretty, pretty fun journey. Yeah, so these steps are, sorry. Yeah, no worries. These are steps are to connect to your data source, to collect data, assign context, execute condition logic, notify uh, the, uh, the user or system, and visualize. And I understand that for some of you, especially if you're new to the Pi system, it, it may look advanced. So what, I, what I'm thinking, Michelle, uh, why don't we help our customers to understand how they can improve their maintenance model? I think that's a great idea. How do we do that? I have an example. Oh, great. Though, let me <laughs> ask you one question first. Do you know what that is? Oh, uh, that looks like an engagement ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe for an engineer. <laughs> um, and actually, these things are quite pricey as well. But it's a ball bearing, and it's intended to reduce uh, friction between moving parts of a pump. And here's our pump. It's a critical asset on our process. And what's great about this bearing is that it's new, which means any engineer like Mike would be really happy to have it installed on his pump, which he uses on his process. Though every piece of equipment has its operational life cycle, and we all know what happens if it's used ex ex extensively. Ultimately, the bearing fails. Oh, Mike doesn't look very happy at all. Yeah, probably because he has to call a maintenance crew now to get the pump repaired. He also expect, um, expects significant downtime here as well as a call from his manager because Mike's process is completely offline. Uh-oh. Yeah, though this strategy is very common and it's, it's called reactive maintenance or run to failure. In fact, this is not the first time the bearing failed. It happened five months ago with, with the same pump. And Mike is a smart guy, so he realizes that he can schedule maintenance before the pump fails. Now he's going to implement calendar-based maintenance. He will schedule maintenance every four months, hopefully to prevent the failure. Well, what happens if the pump's not running the whole time? Sometimes pumps are taken out of service. That's a great point. 
to improve your preventive maintenance model, you can calculate run hours. So now you will trigger your maintenance ba based on this value of run times. So that can be gathered from the Pi system. Exactly. Great. So, and actually we can gather all data we need from our uh, control system. The control system doesn't roll this data up for us. And also usually white people don't have access to this data. So that's why Pi system is so valuable here. So we are collecting operational data and talking about operational data, there are much more parameters which can help us to improve our maintenance strategy. So let's say we can calculate efficiency based on our operational data, and this is how we can implement condition-based maintenance model. Great. Yeah. So we can see here some trends, and I think, yeah, hmm. we talked about bearing temperature. I think yeah, it's red. It looks red. like the red line is going up and then down all of a sudden. Yeah. So Mike is really happy with this condition-based maintenance model. Though he doesn't has, uh, have to stop here, now with all data stored in the Pi system, he can implement his predictive maintenance model and even run uh, machine learning here based on all five years of data he has in his Pi system. In fact, we have many partners who specialize in predictive maintenance solutions and I'm pretty sure they, are, they will welcome your questions uh, during this user's conference. Mike looks very happy, and you will be too. You'll be rising stars in your organization. Yeah, well, he's smiling. I think he has visited his dentist back when <laughs> pump, pump was down, <laughs> yeah. So I would love to spend more time uh, for each uh, maintenance model, though we don't have enough time during this session. So, Michelle, why don't we take our pump and pick up two types of maintenance for it, and I will um, share some details on it. Well, I think the easiest things to do are the middle two, actually. They're, they're very simple, straightforward. OK, I agree. So we get rid of reactive maintenance. It's, it's not really efficient. And predictive, it, it's very advanced. So for our two maintenance model, um, for instance, for preventive maintenance, we can calculate pump status maintenance dates from our uh, CMMS system and calculate run hours and trigger our maintenance ba based on this value. And for condition-based maintenance, we can also take some operational data such as temperature, flow rate, and calculate pumps efficiency based on this data. So let's take a look at this example. And I want to start here from something you may already know. So if you're Pi system user, or if you've seen the previous session, you may already know that the Pi system is composed of three fundamental capabilities. First, it collects data with our Pi interfaces and connectors. Next, it stores data in Pi Data Archive. It manages and enhances data, giving asset context to the data and allowing calculations with our analytics and even frames. And finally, it delivers data to the end user or system with our visualization clients, such as by vision, data link, process book, and notifications. So using this as a baseline for our maintenance model, I'd like to cover five steps for uh, CBM implementation, um, knowing our capabilities. So we connect to our data source, we assign context, we execute condition logic, visualize and notify our user. Though the best part about CBM is that you don't have to have your engineer sitting at his desk waiting for something to happen with his eyes glued on the screen. Oh my goodness. Yep. Instead, you can make uh, Pi system work for him. And he may, for instance, receive notification while he's having his coffee in the break room. So keeping this is in mind, we, we want to focus on notifying our user first and then providing all the tools for visualization. Hmm, I just noticed that you swapped visualization and alert and notify. Exactly. So this is specific for CBM. Okay. 
So I will cover each of these five steps now. And again, I'm slightly changing my sequence here because I realize that it's crucial here to cover how to configure system, um, how to set up data collection, though I want to show you first the end result, the notification, so we better understand what our configuration will accomplish. So I will start with notifications, and here we have multiple options. First, I can notify an end user, and it can be an email, or text message, or even an instant message uh, to Skype for business. Second option is to notify a system, which can be a CMMS, and we can generate a work order in our CMMS using a web service delivery channel. This is actually my favorite option. I'm a big proponent of integrating with business systems. So speaking with um, SAP PM or Maximo, or Oracle um, automatically is, is where I would go. Yeah, so now, considering the fact that we have a room full of engineers here and not maintenance systems sitting on chairs, which would be completely awkward, mm -hmm. I'd like to show you an example of an email notification. So here's my Outlook client, and I just received a mes message saying that the run hours limit was exceeded for my pump. So I open up our visualization tool where I can analyze this event. Here I have a trend with run hours for this pump. Though I really wanna make sure that it really requires maintenance. So I add efficiency to the same trend and as well as efficiency threshold here and I see that it's very close to its limit. So first I wanna acknowledge this event to let my colleagues know that I analyzed it. And finally, I insert the comment here uh, where I say uh, that I request uh, maintenance uh, for this pump. So this is really great, and we've used a PyVision, for instance, to analyze this. Though, let's think about our VP of operations, who may not be interested in specific notifications, as much as an overall production performance. So he may want to see a high level KPI dashboard from where he can drill into more specific view for his assets efficiency, as well as see whether his engineers taken some action. So we can give him exactly that using our visualization tools. So we already seen PyVision, uh, if you'd like to build a summary display for your VP of operations, you can use our add-in for Microsoft Excel by date link. Or some of our customers like PyProcess Book, uh, due to its rich feature set and familiar graphical uh, user interface, which is similar to HMI. Uh, and if geospatial context is important for you, you can even put data on a map using our integrator for Esri ArcGIS. So that way we could get a better sense of the relationship between assets. Correct. Um, so now I'd like to show you example for our KPI dashboard for VP of operations. So here is an overview of my pump station and I see that pump four is underperforming. So I drill into more detailed view here where I have all maintenance information for my pump as well as its properties. I can also analyze efficiency on a trend, as well as process data which may influence efficiency. From the same display, I can see the whole list of events related to this pump. Specifically, I can find exact moment of time when my maintenance event happened or run hours event happened. And I can analyze details for this event exactly from here. Okay, I can see that an engineer already commented, well, actually it was me during the last video. Um, so. Tricky, tricky. Tricky. And now we are moving to data collection step. And this is my favorite, so I really wanna tell you how to configure an OPC interface, set up DCOM security, great <laughs> no, 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 stop, stop. I think that's too much. Too much, yeah, I'm, I'm just kidding. So um, 
we have multiple options here and we can collect data from various data sources using our Pi interfaces and Pi connectors. We can store data in our Pi data archive in a very efficient and secure manner. And um, you can check our YouTube learning channel. We have a lot of videos there which can help to uh, set up everything. And of significant importance here to make sure that you are collecting all data you need for your CBM, your condition-based maintenance. So now we assume that we are collecting all data for our pump, such as bearing temperature, um, flow rates, and it's time to start using this data. Though we have, first, we have many pumps, so we need to make it in a better way, in the most efficient way. So, what we can do here is to build a digital model of our pump, digital representation of a piece of equipment where we can map all its properties within the model. We create a template of our pump in our asset framework. We map our Pi tags, such as pump status and bearing temperature, as well as we can link some data from external systems such as CMMS or uh, specifications database. Here I have installation date, a total head, and some other parameters. So what we've created here is a, a digital twin. That's the key phrase today. It's a digital twin of, of this piece of equipment. Right. So having all this data within the template, we can build calculations for our pump. So we can easily calculate pump run times, number of starts, as well as efficiency. And we use our asset analytics to implement these calculations. Again, everything is built in one template, and after, after we finish building our template, we can apply all these calculations to all our pumps. Though it can be really hard to start. How, what attributes do I have to map? And even when I started building this demo, I didn't start from scratch. I used our asset-based example kit. And it's a great option for you or for those of you who, who want to test out how to implement your CBM model. So we have this asset-based example kit available on Pi Square website. It's absolutely free. It includes example asset framework stru structure with all calculations, and you can easily map it to your Pi tags or use a sample data, a data set we also provided. So what's really key here is that you don't want to go out and try and boil the ocean, right? So start small, pick some really key assets that you want to improve on, visit Pi Square, download an asset uh, template for that piece of equipment, and get going. So let's take a look how our um, template will look like and how to implement these calculations in asset framework. So here's my pump element, which is already built based on a template. I have my asset properties and operational data here. Everything configured for this template. And it's time to create my calculations. And now I'm going to show you just one example for run hours. I will calculate uh, main, uh, run hours since last maintenance, run hours since installations, and as well as a uh, number of starts here. It looks like there's a lot of built-in functions and some IntelliSense that's built in here because you're typing pretty fast there. Correct, and I don't have to remember everything, <laughs> though it's years of practice, you know? <laughs> yeah. So here I'm typing my calculations, uh, my formulas, and I map these uh, calculations to actual Pi tags. So I can use these results later, maybe in my predictive model. Uh, finally, after I mapped all my attributes, I can schedule my calculation. I will select a periodic trigger each uh, five minutes. I evaluate results to make sure they are calculated correctly. And finally, I have all this data for my pumps calculated. So this is the, just the template that you built, right? Yeah, I built template once, and then it automatically applied all calculations for all my five pumps. Automagically. The word is automagically. <laughs> exactly. Right. Though we are moving to the most interesting part now, to heart and soul of CBM, ah. execute condition logic. In my case, it's really simple. 
I want to compare run hours since last maintenance with the run hours trigger, which is set according to recommendation of the most experienced engineer at my plant who, in fact, retired last month and lives on Fiji now. Lucky Carl. Yeah, though I'm glad he shared all his knowledge and we started an asset framework now. Me too, because <laughs> long distance calls to Fiji are pretty expensive. Yeah, tell me about it. So, it's very easy to implement um, our condition logic with the use of pi even frames. What pi even frames do, they capture this moment of time and you just say, what do you want to monitor using, during this event as well as how do you want to trigger it? Again, everything is based on templates and configured in asset framework. So at the beginning of that event frame, that's, that's where the pump time run hours is, and the end is where maintenance actually took care of it. Correct. Right? Okay. So first we configure what to monitor, and we configure everything through event frame templates. In my case, I want to monitor efficiency, run hours since maintenance, as well as a trigger. And next, I say, set when to trigger my event. And it's also configured with asset analytics, just to different types, uh, even frame generation. And here I type my uh, condition logic. Um, when run hours um, exceeded the limit, then I open my event. I set the trigger and we are ready to go. So after I have my even frame configured, I'm ready to send notification. Cool. Yeah. So. You probably have seen this slide before, though it's Pi System Admin edition of the slide. So how do I configure my notification? Hmm. It's very simple, and again, I'm using my template here. So first, I specify what is my trigger, and notification work, well, notifications work together with Pi even frames. So I just map it to my even frame trigger I configured one step before. After that, I want to say who is my victim, it's me, who will receive my notification. And finally, I configure the format of the message. In my case, it's an email. I want to add here some maintenance information, some process data, as well as put, um, include a link to visualization um, display for my pump. And I put a signature here, it's your Pi system, so nobody calls me directly when receive, he receives this That's notification. That's right, the Pi system administrator does not want to take maintenance calls. Oh, no. Right. And <laughs> so we've covered all five steps. And just to summarize, we collect our data from a data source with Pi interfaces and connectors. We store data in Pi Data Archive. Next, we assign context for uh, our data, which is building an digi a digital clone of our asset. After that, we execute condition logic with e Pi even frames and asset analytics. And finally, we notify our user with Pi notifications and give him ability to uh, perform additional forensics with our visualization tools. Again, I encourage you to use this asset-based example kit, which is available on our Pi Square website. Though if you're looking for prescriptive guidance, we have this CBM guidebook, and it includes uh, very detailed examples on how to implement condition-based maintenance for different types of equipment for different industries. We also have an online course for CBM, and we have a microsite for implementation of CBM in power generation industry. So it's a lot of information. Though, Michelle, what if our customers are looking for something more? So here we've given you most of the basics um, of you know, getting up and running on a condition-based maintenance system. We've got many customers who have presented their findings over the years. And um, in fact, there's a number of customers that are presenting at this user conference. So here are a few from each industry I've, I've noted here. The first um, is actually this afternoon um, in the Grand Ballroom. Carl Alexander from White House Utility District is going to talk about leak detection. So this is 
um, asset monitoring on water pipes. Um, and then the others are all through industry presentations tomorrow. So we've got some from um, facilities, manufacturing, supply chain, transportation is my favorite because I like trains and boats and things like that. Um, and then in the oil and gas, where I came from, and um, industrial chemicals, there's three. And then metals, minings, and materials, power generation, and transmission and distribution. So there's a number of these out here. I encourage you to look through your agenda. Everybody's got the app on their phone, right? You're all using it, right? Good. Excellent. And finally, um, we've got 1,600 um, business or customer presentations over the years that we've gathered and up our, on, on our website. When this event is over and this uh, presentation is posted, it should be posted um, in a couple of weeks, um, you could go through, I picked a, a cherry picked a few customers, if you will, um, click on these links and you'll see that, that I have their, their um, summary with their business impact as well as you know, what they did, what the simple steps were. So let's see, uh, before we get to Q&A, one thing that we did want to mention is that we're always looking for feedback from customers, always. So this year we've introduced a new tool called User Voice. And um, you too, instead of relying on tech support or field service to relay information about your company to us, you can go to feedback.osisoft.com. You can look through each of the products. You can review um, enhancement requests that other customers have made and upvote for the ones that are your favorite. And better yet, you can enter your own that other people can vote on. Everybody wants to do that, right? OK, awesome. So again, um, I'm Michelle Kouye'e. I'm Sasha Kirvanosova. We have strange last names. Oh, no. <laughs> so, right. And now we will take questions from the audience. So please wait for the microphone. No questions. There's got to be some. Come on, don't be shy. Jump up. It's good. Yeah, we have one question, I think. Where is the microphone? Yep. There's one over here. Or do we need uh, the AF as well? So for notification, you need AF. However, if you just want to post a value and make it flash and process book, you can use calculations. Again, you need AF for asset analytics. But there are old-fashioned ways that we can talk about afterwards if, you're, if you really are dead set against AF. Then you shouldn't be. Okay. Um, we've got lots of tools nowadays that will help you get up and running very quickly on AF. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. We have one over here. Okay. I can't see him. Where is he? Mm -hmm. oh, right there. Hi. Hi. Can the type of calculations you do be geospatial? For instance, could I calculate... Um, when I have a data point that's a mile away from this other data point? So not currently. Um, we have a partner, Esri, and we have the Pi integrator for Esri ArcGIS. With the Pi integrator for Esri ArcGIS, um, we automatically push updates to the ArcGIS environment. You can build very cool, simple dashboards that have got geospatial calculations that are already built into it. Um, and add widgets and, and things like that to it. So uh, a distance, driving distance, um, um, geospatial aggregation, those things are already available in the ArcGIS environment. I hope that answered the question. Yes? Great. There's one right in the middle, two right in the middle. Yes, we use uh, Maximo for our work order yeah. management system. What if we wanted to go ahead and initiate that work order creation or that PM into the, our work order management system? Right. So Maximo um, is, they have services available today. 
And with the latest version of asset analytics, they're supporting complex XML. So you can compose that message that Sasha um, showed you as an email message. So instead of having an email message, you can compose the XML to and um, define an endpoint to push that, the resultant XML to that web service. Okay? Hi. Hi. A lot of our uh, predictive maintenance uh, data is stored in SAP PM. Yes. Is there a way to transfer over that information to Pi AF? And where can I learn how to do that? Yep. Um, if it's a one-shot deal, there's a really easy way to do it. You would export from PM or EAM to a spreadsheet and then import it into Pi using the Pi Builder. Um, we're also working on uh, different integrators and thinking about the ways that we can better synchronize with SAP. Uh, we're looking right now at the um, AIN, which is the Asset Intelligence Network um, for asset synchronization, but that's a little bit far in the future. So once you've got AF built and you've got your limits um, down in, in, in AF, you can build your calculations as Sasha had shown a little bit earlier. And, and just like Maximo, um, SAP went to REST web services um, a few years back, so triggering a, a work order that way should be easy. Anybody else? I'm blinded. Oh, right in front. Wait for the microphone. We can speak, but... Welcome to the shop. <laughs> right. Hey, um, can you perform calculations in external system and then trigger notification based on the result? Well, that's possible, though you have to collect this data. You have to collect the result of your calculation. For external system, we have multiple ways. It depends on the source system, though. And after that, if you have it mapped to your Pi tag, yeah, you can easily uh, trigger notification. Thank you. One right there. Do the connectors, when they connect to the third party systems for the source data and the different assets or the control systems, do they use OPC communications or uh, any kind of native connectivity? I know you were alluding to earlier to like OPC, setting up DCOM and all that. All of the above. Yep. So a lot of times we'll talk to our customers and we'll try to use standards wherever possible, whether that's OPC, uh, DN, DNP, one of those standards. But if the standard isn't available on the control system, um, we'll, why do we have 450 different protocols? Because that's how many there are out there and we're really good at writing interfaces to them. Um, you had mentioned some templates. I wonder if there are templates available for various pieces of equipment, pumps, compressors, and so forth. Uh, yeah, so you can check this asset-based example kits, and we have templates available for some uh, types of equipment. For those templates, can we rely on the calculation you have? Are they real calculation? We have to make our own. Sorry, say it again. Well, the templates you have, because I've used some, there is like there is a big line in the in the manual. Do not use these templates in real exa in real application. I'm not sure I understood the question. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I did download your template a month ago, and uh, in the manual says do not use these templates in your real exa in real application, because the calculation there just for educational. Yeah, well, purposes. yeah, mainly because we have some data, they are generated randomly. So this is one of the reasons we don't recommend to use them j just immediately, right? Though you can use it as a baseline. Yep. I'm just putting this back so I don't walk away with it. Mm -hmm. So there is a different suite of uh, possibilities, right? Like somebody asked about process book and you were talking about asset framework and all that. So is there a session where you can go and say, okay, what are all the different building blocks in a Pi system, right from the Pi connectors at the L1, L2 level, all the way there, 
to the big data cloud um, and saying what are the various possibilities available like for one-on-one users? Yeah, there's two sessions after this session. One's going to be on big data. How do we take data from the Pi system and move it to big data? Um, and then the last one is on visualization. And Stuart is going to be on stage once again covering that subject. Is it going to cover all the building blocks of a Pi system to transfer the data from? Stuart, yes, no. So is, is a later session in this track going to cover all the building blocks to export data? Um, it'll cover the basic steps, but I, w I wouldn't call it a comprehensive um, covering. And that's in the next session, session three. So you get a preview into that. Yeah, you'll see the basic building blocks. You'll, you'll be able to see, oh, okay, that's what it would look like. Um, yeah, that's what you'll get. And they'll be able to refer you to people that can answer more in-depth questions about exporting data like that. Thank you, Stuart. Hi. Hi you're I right was wondering if spot. the Pi process books and the data link and the vision and, and all the different pieces of it, are they all entailed in one package and so we all have access to that because I know my company has process books mm -hmm. will it have also these other functions as well or do so I right so we have a we have three different visual well more than three but three main visualization products right you mentioned them uh, data link which is an Excel add in Microsoft Excel add and it works in spreadsheets the second is process book this allows users to create uh, graphics that can mimic HMIs or, or even sticking a map or a, a screenshot as wallpaper on. And the third is uh, PyVision, formerly known as uh, PyCoreSight. Um, there's a bundle that you can buy called Pi Visualization Suite. And when you buy Pi Visualization Suite, you get all the enchiladas. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that it? I think so. Okie dokie. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.